Jackie Bevanroth started her own content marketing firm, Muse Content Group, in 2011 after spending about 12 years in local advertising agencies. Her company was acquired by a larger firm in 2015, but after 18 months, she decided to exit that acquisition. She took a few months off and then relaunched her business in the fall 2017. She spoke with Cranes recently about the decisions she has made at each step of the way and the lessons that others can learn from her journey. What was your vision for your firm when you started it in 2011? I wanted to build a firm that helped companies communicate with more confidence and consistency, and that took shape in the form of a content marketing firm. We really helped businesses tell their stories, but before we would get into storytelling, we would do positioning to help them be able to talk about their businesses in ways that resonated with people. Why did you make the decision to be acquired four years later? At the time, I was in the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. They encourage you to build a growth plan. As I was building mine, I realized that at that stage in my career, what I loved was the craft of building the communication. I was definitely more passionate about working in my business than on my business. So I thought an acquisition would be a good opportunity for me to get back into the craft of communication strategy and writing and not have to worry about all the things that went along with running a business. I think that is actually a common feeling among entrepreneurs who build businesses out of their passions but who aren't born business owners. You were acquired by AMG, a full-service advertising agency in Solon, but you decided to exit that acquisition after 18 months. What happened? The owner originally offered me a partnership, and I declined it because I really just wanted to work on the craft of messaging and content marketing and not have to deal with operations. However, he still wanted a partner, so about 8 months into my tenure there, he took on a partner who had a technology and operational background. Together they decided to pivot the company in a way that devalued my department. There is nothing wrong with that, and there wasn't a bad breakup or anything. It was just the realization that when I was acquired, AMG was a full-service advertising agency but now they wanted to pivot into more of a technology company. I knew this would make it very difficult for me to sell my services at a strategic level. What is your vision for your business going forward now? June 1, 2017, was my first day out, and I took a three-month sabbatical, because although I had negotiated the rights to my business back, I wasn't convinced that I wanted to reinstate it. I thought about just being a freelancer because I had hit all of my goals in my career. It was sort of a weird place to be. There were no more ladders to climb. I had done everything that I ever wanted to do, and the only thing I hadn't done was build a profitable business. While I was in this limbo last summer, the U.S. Central Region of the Entrepreneurs Organization was referred to me for a full year of content development. I was immediately thrown into this amazing engagement where I had direct access to all of these successful entrepreneurs. I was really inspired by that. I interviewed over 45 EO members through the course of this engagement. qualify for EO, you have to own a business of $1 million plus. These are serious business owners, and as I was interviewing them, I kept thinking I could do this. So in September, I decided to formally reinstate the business. The first check that I deposited in the bank account was an EO check. I did that with the intention of becoming at least a $1 million business within 18 months. How is that going so far? I am billing about 25% above what my highest gross revenue was before my agency was acquired. That is all based on referrals from the community in Cleveland and some of my partners nationwide. How is your business different this time around? I am building a strategic agency, not a tactical one. Muse Part 1 was all about tactics. If you need a website written, we got you. If you need a brand blog, we'll do that. You need case studies. Sure, we were billing by the hour, and my hiring philosophy reflected that. 
I was hiring tactical executors instead of strategic people and our rates were a little lower. Now, I am consciously building from the top down. We find that we bring the most value to clients in strategic planning. The biggest challenge we see is that brands today have so many good things to say that they don't know where to start. We help build the strategies to help them communicate with clarity and confidence and consistency and get their entire team on the same page about how you sell and what you say and to whom, then we create the marketing materials around that. For that, we garner premium price points that are fair market with any other small consulting firm. We are more focused on creating value for the client and helping them achieve their goals. It's a very different way of doing business, and I am super excited to see where this leads. What advice might you give other small business owners making decisions about potentially selling their business or departing an acquisition? The entrepreneurship journey is full of decisions. With the big decisions I have made, it has been very helpful for me to understand the position of my company in the marketplace and also my personal values and expectations. When I was on sabbatical last year, it was very uncomfortable because I didn't have any goals. I was just kind of taking assignments here and there. When I was acquired, I had been reading, built to sell, and knew I was building a company to sell. When the opportunity came across my desk, I already had it in mind. Understanding my goals and my values really helped me make that decision. Before I made the decision to exit, I brought a consultant into AMG to help the new partner and the owner really define the new position of that company. Once they were able to define their pivot and their new position, I realized they were going down a separate path than I was. I would never have made that realization, and might even still be there today, had they not been very decisive and clear about their own goals. Suddenly their goals didn't align with my goals and my values. That made it very easy for me to say, goals and values misaligned, I'm stepping away. No hard feelings, I feel like for those big decisions, if you don't have your goal and your position and your values fully defined in your mind, you are never going to be able to either take advantage of new opportunities or feel confident in making large decisions that have a positive impact on your career.